Hello and welcome back to the channel. Let's jump straight into the news. Platinum Studio Head doesn't think next gen hardware will be as groundbreaking as the Switch. I've done a little story on these, um, well, I've read the news about what the same they said last week, which is about they, if it, they wouldn't want to be part of Xbox now. They, um, yeah, if Xbox wanted to buy them, they would turn them down. Or if Microsoft wanted to buy them, they would turn them down. And then I went into the story sort of how that come to pass. And now Platinum continues to remain um, in the limelight and relevant. They've now come up with this. So they just seem to be very vocal at the moment, Platinum Studio, when they shouldn't be really. Um, as I said in my last video, they, they've always been sort of Nintendo minded in a way. But to come out with something like um, next gen consoles won't be as groundbreaking as a Switch is, um, I mean, this guy says it's his personal opinion. And yes, it's true, it is your personal opinion. My personal opinion is that you're an idiot. Um, because how can what, 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 what why is the switch groundbreaking that is portable that um can switch to which which no other console can do other than it's portable and the controller controllers maybe can i'm not sure i can't see why it's groundbreaking at all considering next generation consoles what they're both capable of this is a really silly statement to make um yeah, let's go on through what he says. I don't want to sound like, hey, I know everything about the new consoles and they're boring, but with the information that I have now, I haven't seen any extremely big surprises. Um, really? Okay. Um, so anything the Xbox is working on at the moment with the power and um, the software they're doing and the, the SSD on the PS5, nothing's a surprise, no, but the Nintendo Switch being portable is a surprise? Really? Okay. When you're simply seeing graphical improvements or just faster, bigger, obviously it's nice, but it doesn't have that same inventive quality that really surprised me with past consoles. Okay. I just can't bother reading this guy. He's just, just yeah, it's his opinion, and it's, it's fair enough. You've got, you've had your opinion. Um, but Platinum Games, you need to stop trying to. Um, just remain keep relevant by just coming out with nonsense. You need to stop it now. Wind it in. Let's move on to the next bit of news. So the last of us two continues to remain in the uh, spotlight. Um, kind of for all the wrong reasons still. Uh, I've never had interest in the games, but you know I can see people's fascination with it. Um, but the last of us two, last of us part two, seemingly blocked in Middle Eastern countries. Now, oh, there could be some spoilers here. I'm not sure how much you've looked into any of this, but the main character, uh, Ellie, I think her name is, is going to be a lesbian. And there's also a transgender character in the game as well. So sorry if that's a spoiler to anyone. Um, but uh, this is, but I can only imagine this is part of the reason why because um, some of those areas are, are very sort of Muslim or you know, very religious states and they're not too keen on that kind of thing. <laughs> don't know what, what more to say. So I can't understand why they'll be, be banned. Um, as for sales, will this sort of do much to the game's sales? I don't think it will have that much. Though I know, um, so they've got less of a tolerance to all GBT things. Um, I'm not sure how much um, this will affect the game sales, though I do think what will affect the game sales is what some of the spoilers come out with. Of really, some people are not going to play the game because the game's been spoiled for them. And two, some of the people don't like the direction the game's taking. They're calling it woke. They're calling it woke, uh, The Last of Us. Uh, so how that will affect the game sales is something to, to see and how that will affect its ratings. I'm no doubt, I mean, you're going to get the Sony sites will rate it 10 out of 10 anyway. They've probably already given it a 10 out of 10. They've already wrote their um, review for it already. It's not going out. They've not even played the game yet. That's how they are. But um, as for the sort of the more sort of generalised journalists um, that a bit, have a bit more freedom what they say, um, I wonder how what, what they're going to think of it. Um, so it's, it'd be interesting to see how it rates and how it sells. But yeah, it's been banned. So if you're in the Middle East, you're not about to play this game, I'm afraid. Um, unless you get a bootleg version, which your religion probably allows.
um so there we go uh once again no hype for me for this game no interest whatsoever but you know i, I don't like single player games at the best of times especially ones that are really catered around sort of um just sort of cut scenes and just movie-esque things i'd rather sit in front of a tv and watch a movie with a beer you know what i mean just chill um rather than sit in my not too comfortable gaming chair with a controller in my hand just watching the screen for two hours um, so there we go. Last of us to block a uh, band in Middle East. Oh dear. Let's move on to the next bit of news. So this came out earlier uh, in the week. Um, Xbox Series X, the most powerful and compatible next-gen console with thousands of games at launch. Thousands of games at uh, launch, what they're referring to is a backwards compatibility you're going to have on the Xbox Series X. So you're going to be able to play Xbox One games, 360 games, and OG Xbox games. They're all going to be, it's going to be a full compatible console, which is fantastic and exceptionally consumer friendly. Especially at the moment, Sony is still sort of um, on eggshells around what they're doing with their backwards compatibility. They're still sort of treading water with it. They're not sure what they're doing. They're not being very clear, basically, what they're doing with backwards compatibility. Whereas Xbox are coming out and going, yep, this is it. Poof, on the plate and putting it all out for you. Showing all their cards. Sony is still being a bit reserved on it. Um... I think they're still wondering how it's going to work with their SSD that's meant to be like a god status thing. How that's going to work with Battles Compatible Games, most probably. Um, didn't think that through, did they? That could be the problem. Um, so they might be compatible games, but they might be very limited games. And what I've read and heard, that they're only going to be PS4 games as well. So you won't be able to play PS3, PS2 or PS1 games on your PS5. Only select PS4 games. So that's where this comes from, next-gen console with thousands of games at launch. And if you've got Game Pass, a lot of them will be playable um, straight from the get-go. So once you pick up, well, you walk into a store, pick up your Xbox Series X for £400, which is estimated to be now because they're going to um, stump the PS5's price. Um, and then you, with it, you get X game, game Pass with thousands of games. Get-go, day one, thousands of games. And the most powerful is console. And that's, I think, the what Xbox are reaching for. Um, so thousands of developers from across the globe are currently creating the next gen generation of um, transformative games, many of which can only be realised through power and innovation of the Xbox series. Led by Halo Infinite, our 15 Xbox Game Studio teams are hard at work creating the biggest and best lineup of exclusives. Now, this is the, the interesting thing and the important thing about Microsoft buying these studios. A lot of people down playing these studios. But for one, they, they, they've got a lot bigger now from what they originally were. And two, Xbox is throwing budgets, um, massive budgets. Um, some of the studios, like Ninja Fury, are in fact creating two or three games on the go. They've just dropped Bleeding Edge. They've got Hellblade 2 in in the works, as, we, as we've seen, which looks fantastic. And they're also playing, they're making a game called Project Mara, I believe it's called, which is a horror. So they're working on three games at the moment. Playground Games are apparently working on two games. Rare's working on two games. Um, you've got a lot of studios that are working on two or three games at the same time. And this is due to this, their, their boost, their, their money boost, basically, from Xbox. So that's fantastic. So you've got 15 studios produce, producing more than 15 games. And I think it's um, Xbox's, um, or Phil's approach is that he wants to drop at least one AAA title every three months. So uh, that, that's first party, which if you look at look at the grand scheme of things, that doesn't happen at the moment. You probably get one, maybe two for the entire year. Um, I mean, it's, it's, you're gonna, a lot of people are going to come at me now. But let's look at let's look at the PS4. I mean, last year you had Days Gone, that was it. Year before that, you just had God of War, that was it. Um, year before that, you had. Horizon Zero Dawn. Because a lot of people are going to say, oh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man, it was AAA, but it wasn't first party. Um, Death Stranding wasn't first uh, first party. So you're going to have a lot of stuff like this. Someone decided to call me while I was monologuing. Okay, so yeah, so you're going to get more um, first party games. Um, so let's move through this. So that's what they're going on about in this, about the capabilities of backwards compatibility and, um, and such. And just con to continue a statement, IGM have pretty much confirmed what I said. Xbox Series X to launch with thousands of games. Compatibility, game preservation are a focus for Xbox in the next generation. So it should be. So it should be. 
Microsoft is doubling down on a known strength by confirming that the Xbox Series X will launch with thousands of games leveraging its years-long backward compatibility efforts in comparison to Sony's mixed messaging on PlayStation 5's backward compatibilities. Compatibility, compatibilities. With more than 100,000 hours of playtesting already completed, thousands of games are already playable on Xbox Series X today, from the biggest blockbusters to cult classics and fan favourites. Xbox Series X Director of Program Management Jason Reynolds wrote, Yes, which is what I just showed you. Um, so there we go. Um, so IGN or even IGN are on the um, are supporting Xbox on this because or this uh, Ryan McCafferty specifically because um, it's exceptionally consumer friendly. I don't know why. Because the problem with not having Mac was completely better is that you're not tied to that console. So if you had a PS4 and your games are not going to carry over to PS5, well, why buy a PS5? You know what I mean? But if you own an Xbox X and your games, all the games you own in your library can now be played next generation, that means they're all going to carry with you. So they're just not, you don't have to own lots of consoles in your house. You can just own one console, all the games. That's how it should be. You wouldn't want that. You know what I mean? If you want to well, watch a movie, you wouldn't have a VHS device for individual movies that you want to watch, would you? Or such like that. It's just a ridiculous sort of thing, notion to have. You don't do it for anything. Um, but just to just actually just to support all this that's been going on at the moment. I mean, if that news isn't, isn't as fantastic as it is, Xbox Series X can add HDR and 120 FPS support to older games, pretty much like what the PC does. Um, Microsoft is planning to automatically add HDR support to games played on its upcoming Xbox Series X console. While existing games will automatically play better on the Xbox Series X. Microsoft is also doing some work to add HDR support and even improve some games from 30fps locked frame rate to 60fps or 60 to 120. So yes, you could possibly be playing um, Gears 4 uh, Next Generation at 120fps. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Um, in partnership with the Xbox Advanced Techno uh, Technology Group, Xbox Series X delivers a new innovative HDR reconstruction technique. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, so they go on to really, um, it's interesting, I mentioned Mirror's Edge because that's one of the games that supposedly one of the studios are working on in secret, a new a reboot of Mirror's Edge. So that could be why they're going to support and bring that game up so you can play the old version at a much better quality before you play the new version of the game. Um, so, so all the games are not only so not only when the console launches are you gonna have um, all these games, this massive games library, but all the games will be improved both graphically and fr with frame rates. Another thing that Sony are also not too clear on sharing on that, they're not saying what will be improved, what won't be improved. As far as we can see, the games, some games will be compatible, but will they be better? Will they be improved? They've not done that much for the PS4 Pro so far. If those who had a PS4, there wasn't that much of a performance boost to the PS4 Pro. They didn't really cater for it too much. So it'd be interesting to see if if they even do that. I mean, would you want to play? Because you can see the the differences, the gap, the massive gap that's going to be with PS5 and PS4. So are you going to play the PS4 games in their quality as they are now, standard, on a PS5? It's just it's just not going to... You're going to pay that much money for a powerful console and just not get it. See, things like... And just not get that quality. Whereas things like PC and Xbox Series X are doing the right thing. They do it. You, you upgrade you can't, your PC, your games upgrade with it. That's how it should be. It's just common sense. Um, so that's a very interesting article. And there's just confirming a bit more here. Additionally, Ronald noted that older games will run natively on the Xbox Series X, giving them complete access to systems, faster CPU, GPU, and SSD. Yes, that means you'll see load times improvements. Even better, the system's new quick resume feature, which lets you instantly pick up a game from where you left off, will also work on older titles. This is how the Xbox Series X is being innovative. They're just chucking so much into this console, so many new features that it's mind-blowing. And um, for the most part, it's all being completely overlooked by the media. And well, we can see why that gender is. But um, I mean, that's fantastic. 
What do you think? Um, oh, you're going to pick up an Xbox Series X at launch. Um, what do you think about playing old titles PC? I mean, further down it says something along the lines of it's not the um, well, back compatibility isn't quite a marquee feature of next generation consoles. When in a recent poll, a recent poll of gamers went out, and the first thing was what they want from new consoles. The first thing they said was price. The second was power. The third was back was compatibility. It's exclusives wasn't even in the top three. Um, I don't think exclusives even in the top four. Um, so, that's, but the top three were price, power, and backwards compatibility. That's what gamers were requesting in a recent poll. Of um, so, yeah. Let me know your thoughts. Um, love to hear your opinions on on all this take of the backwards compatibility. Do you are you looking forward to backwards compatibility? Are you going to replay old games if they're brought up? Improved speed features, blah blah. blah. I mean, you better play Forza Horizon 4, 120 FPS. Can you imagine that? How fantastic would that be? Imagine the graphics upgrade of it as well. So, um, let me know what you think. Please comment, please share, and look out for my podcast um, show that will be coming out next oh, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, thank you all for watching, and goodbye for now.